Someone reached out to me on Twitter, at SEM Maggie, and asked me to whip up an episode on Northern Ireland. So let's get a whipping. Today we're talking about the issue that puts the ire in Northern Ireland. Now anytime there's a direction at the beginning of a country's name, safe bet that they have a fraught relationship with one of their neighbors. Northern Ireland, South Korea, you get the idea. Now this left Northern Ireland in a weird position where they're the area of overlap in the Venn diagram between Britain and Ireland. You're definitely part of the United Kingdom, but just how united is that kingdom? Now today on the island we have largely two separate factions. Northern Irish Unionists who want Northern Ireland to stay in the United Kingdom and Southern Irish Nationalists who want to eventually unite the entire Irish island into Ireland. Now this push and pull has been incredibly evident during the Brexit negotiations. Ireland is a part of the European Union while Northern Ireland is a part of the United Kingdom. It's like Romeo and Juliet's Capulets and Montagues. You're really cool but ooh, you're a part of the United Kingdom instead of the European Union? Yeah, we can't be together anymore. It's the wrong group. Now this UK exit from the EU transformed this Irish border from that of maybe California and Arizona's relationship to something more like a California-Mexico relationship. So what's the problem? Just build a wall, or at least a booth to keep track of things a bit. Well, when Ireland split, it spurred a multi-decade conflict that killed thousands of civilians. In the 90s, everyone just sort of put a pause on the fighting by agreeing to let bygones be bygones and just kind of ignoring the border. Ireland is neither united nor split. No walls, no booth, just a sign. We'll figure out a solution down the road. Besides, everyone's a part of the European Union, so it's all the same regulations and taxes on imports and exports anyway. The only reason we'd need to keep track of the inter-Irish product flows is for some bean counter to write a research paper, so we can ignore it. Now that system worked for about 25 years. Then things hit the fan when the United Kingdom left the European Union. Now the United Kingdom is writing their own independent regulations and international taxes on imports and exports from the EU and UK are becoming an issue. Of course, if you want to avoid all that confusing bureaucracy, you can just sort of smuggle things through this open Irish border into the UK. Problem is, if you build any sort of infrastructure on that Irish North Irish border to regulate the flow of goods, that could provoke fresh violence from the Irish nationalists who want to eventually see that country be reunified. The solution that was agreed to in the Brexit talks? Keep that border open and let the European Union continue to dictate the rules and regulations on Northern Ireland's trade practices. Instead, the regulation and tax barrier will be the sea separating the Irish island from Great Britain. Now you might hear that compromise and think, well that sounds a bit mundane and reasonable. Why is there sudden growing unrest in Ireland? Are the Irish nationalists back to wreak havoc on the north again? No, this is actually the Northern Unionists expressing their anger. You see, they feel abandoned by the rest of the United Kingdom. In their mind, it would be like if in the aftermath of the Revolutionary War, America had an awkward talk with Virginia. Yeah, we're independent, but we're leaving you under regulations of the crown because, well, we didn't want to provoke another conflict. You don't mind paying a bit more for stamps, right? Anyways, we're independent, so let's write some new rules and regulations governing everyone except for Virginia. The 12 colonies plus Virginia. You know, the United States. Now this brewing Northern Irish Unionist anger at their asterisk status was recently provoked. You see, Northern Irish prosecutors just chose not to prosecute Irish nationalists for breaking COVID protocols and attending the funeral of the former IRA leader and Irish nationalist politician, Sinn Féin. Many unionists perceive that decision not to prosecute the members of the party as a sign of political favoritism, given the loaded symbolism surrounding the funeral and that unionists were told to cancel their traditional 12th of July parades last summer. 
So there you have it. In a real M. Night Shyamalan twist, a group of people are taken to the streets to become more integrated with the United Kingdom. I wonder if they're going to be hosting a Dependence Day anytime soon. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Thank you for reaching out to me on Twitter, at SEMaggie. There's a link in the description and I hope I answer your question. Now I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on a different link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.